Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So every now and again, I like to do a video on this topic to give people kind of like a realistic insight into dropshipping, what it's like to start a business, what it's like to run a business, and ultimately just talk about expectations. Um, I talk to a lot of people pretty much on a daily basis when it comes to dropshipping because I offer a callback service for people to look into join the academy. Um, I speak to a lot of people wanting to get into dropshipping and people still naturally have their hesitations about whether it actually works or not. Things like, is it too competitive? Shipping times, the legality of it, product quality, supplies and all that sort of stuff. So I want to address all of those things realistically and give you those realistic answers to the questions which you may be sat there and um, wondering about now. Before we get into the video then, I, it's worth mentioning that when it comes to the whole kind of make money online space, then regardless of whether it's dropshipping or not, regardless of whether it's Amazon FBA, crypto, whatever it is, because of the nature of dropshipping, because it is so accessible for little cost, because it is super scalable, once you've found something that works, it really does only take one product to make hundreds of thousands of pounds once you've found what works. Actually finding that product itself is another story, which is why I think it falls foul of people kind of looking at it in a negative way because it attracts those sorts of people who are looking to take advantage of those people, unfortunately, who are looking to make money quickly. At the end of the day, people naturally, it's built into humans to always want to do the easiest thing. And so therefore that sort of content is always gonna get the most views. It's always gonna be the most popular pieces of content and Therefore, it's easy to kind of associate dropshipping with this false way of making money that's super easy when in reality that's not the case. So in this video then we're going to be addressing the most popular topics I get asked about um, and just giving you kind of like realistic answers from somebody who actually dropships and has been doing now for the past I think it was June 26, 2016 was my very first sale. So we're coming up to five years now. Um, things have changed quite a lot over that period. So I'm going to discuss some of those things now and give you a realistic insight then into actually what dropshipping is in 2021 to help you decide whether it's for you or not. So the first topic I want to discuss is competition and saturation. Is dropshipping too saturated? Is it too competitive? When it comes to selling online, especially in the world we live in today, we can sell globally, then I don't ever believe there'll ever be a case in which there's not a room to make money online regardless of what you're selling so now don't get me wrong some niches will always be harder than others so for example if somebody was to come to me and say I want to start a brand selling running shoes then I would be telling them they're probably crazy unless they have hundreds of thousands of pounds to invest into product development and branding and bringing influencers and things like that on. So some spaces are a lot more competitive and harder than others, but there's always going to be the next big brand which comes into a space and establishes their market share. For the majority of us, obviously that's quite unrealistic. So if somebody was to come to me and say, what niche should I be going into? or What sort of product should I think about selling? Then running shoes would not be one of those particular products. So if you're sat there wondering then, whether the online space, whether that's e-commerce or marketing, whatever it is, is too competitive to make money in, then the answer is no, there's always room. And what competition, competition can actually be a good thing. Many people forget this, but what you can actually use competition for is inspiration and ideas for your own business. So if there's a particular product that you really wanna sell, if there's other people selling it well, then number one, it gives you that validation. So it proves to you the product is selling, which means there's always gonna be more customers out there who will want to buy that exact same product. So you can use those for inspiration in terms of the design of your store, how do they word their product descriptions, what sort of Facebook ads are working for them. Um, a lot of people don't know about the Facebook ad library. If you Google it, you can see pretty much any ad that any Facebook page is currently running. So if you can validate that product is currently selling well today, then in theory, there's no reason why you can't sell that very same exact product um, and start seeing sales right away. Obviously, as long as it's not like a branded product, like a pair of Nike trainers or, or something along those lines. The biggest factor though that competition has to play is it forces people to up their game. This is why I believe it to be a good thing because when I first started, my store looked very basic. I'll see if I can um, pick out some old screenshots. In fact, I think it's still live. Um, so I'll put it on screen now so you can see it was very basic, but it did the job. It was how I made my first 100 K, but that was five years ago. Now, today in 2021, and um, there's twice the amount of um, advertisers on Facebook, but there's not twice the amount of users. So it is more competitive. You are paying more to essentially reach the same amount of people. But the way you've got to look at it is as long as you're doing things better than the next person, then you're always going to achieve better than them. And that all competition at the end of the day boils down to. So number two is shipping times. Again, a really popular question I get asked nowadays. Can you build a business shipping items that take 
three to four weeks delivery, yes and no. So yes, you can find some initial success. You're gonna get a lot of customer complaints naturally. Are you gonna be able to biz build a business, sorry, that goes on to last for the next five, 10 years? Probably not. There'll come a point where your feedback rating on your Facebook pages gets really low. And if you get loads and loads of negative feedback, it's only gonna to lead to penalties from Facebook and even shutting you down. So at the end of the day, dropshipping is brilliant because it's really accessible. It allows you to test products super cheaply and super quickly. But in my personal opinion, once you've tested products for a month, probably not even that, two, three weeks, if you can drop ship it profitably, I would always be looking to then take further steps to be sourcing that product in bulk, whether it's using CJ and using a local warehouse or using a UK-based fulfillment warehouse or a country local-based fulfillment warehouse. Just to bring those shipping times down, it allows you to control things like the quality much more better. And of course, when it comes to branding and private labeling your products, then obviously it offers many more advantages um, in terms of building your brand customer retention and things like that. Point number three is product quality. Um, it's something, to be honest, I haven't really suffered from much myself over the last four years. Because I tend to do naturally um, progress into shipping in bulk, it allows you to control it a lot more. Um, so to kind of cut a long story short, I had an issue with a supplier who sent me a product which was made from the same material, but it wasn't as thick. Um, each unit weighed something like five or six grams less than what the original sample did. So basically they sent me a lower quality material and I was able to resolve that issue because it was a bulk quantity I paid through PayPal and we were able to kind of resolve it. Whereas when you're drop shipping, you're not seeing the product, they might send the first few out of these really high quality, but then if they're drop shipping, that quality can change and essentially you won't know until your customers start complaining. As long as you go with kind of like a tried and tested supplier, one that has good reviews, has been in business for many, many years, then you should in theory encounter no problems. So it should be a relatively issue to solve either way. Number four is the legality of drop shipping. So registering as a business, where do people stand? Do they need to do it? When do they need to do it? So here in the UK, I believe as I record this video in April 21, um, it's a thousand pounds profit. So once you reach and break that threshold, then you have to start telling HMRC about what you're doing. Whether you do that as a limited business or a sole trader is completely up to you. The best answer I can give you to this is to get to that point and then speak to a professional accountant who will ask you many questions about your current income, your current assets, your goals for the future, um, the profitability of your business, and depending on the answers of those questions to you individually will depend on kind of like the advice that they give you. Point number five is expectations then. This one comes hand in hand with social media because social media at the end of the day somebody coming onto YouTube saying I made a loss of 500 pounds in my first week is not going to get as much attention as I made 10 grand in my first week so naturally they're going to be the videos that's going to be the content which gets the most attention and therefore it can lead to the majority of people having false expectations which is not good because when you get into drop shipping and you're the person who loses 500 pounds in your first week you're then going to turn around and think drop shipping is a scam it doesn't work um, and all those videos and success stories out there are false. Now whilst that may be true, some may be false, some are definitely real. It is 100% possible. There's people in the academy all the time that make really good results in the first couple of weeks, but it's not the reality for everybody. It's not the majority of people who are gonna have that same level of success, especially if you're not following the advice of one person who has experience and following those strategies which are proven. If you're just watching the things on YouTube, then to reach that level of success that quickly is gonna be very unrealistic. What you have to think is, Yes, YouTube is good for getting information, for learning about something, but at the end of the day, that advice might not work for you in comparison to the next person. It might work for you, but not the next person, or so on and so forth. It's really difficult to give out advice on YouTube that's gonna to apply to everybody, which is why I like to do these videos, just to kind of give people realistic expectations um, of what to expect when they first start a dropshipping business. What you always, always, always have to keep in the back of your mind is if it was really that easy, then everybody would be doing it and everybody would be making lots and lots of money. But if I had to put a percentage of it, then I would say, maybe five, 10% of people who start actually do make some money in those first couple of months. Everybody after that is always going to make a loss. And again, this comes down to competition and the quality of the business, the quality of the product you're putting out. As long as you do this better than that 80 and 90% of people, then you're always gonna succeed because you're doing it better. Final note then to finish the video on, I could talk, I could probably write a book about this topic um, is quality over quantity. So many people are in a massive rush to get their business live, selling products and see some money coming in through the door. Leads them to skip corners, it leads them to 
not edit that Chinese logo out of their image or not take those extra few minutes on product descriptions. And what that leads to ultimately is them losing money. What you have to keep in mind is if your store isn't up to scratch and ready, if, your pro if you haven't picked the right products, it doesn't matter how quickly you start running Facebook ads or how much money you spend, you're always gonna lose money. So take your time find decent quality products with decent quality supplies with decent shipping times get your store reviewed from as many people as you possibly can if it's going to be family and friends do not tell them it's your shopify site if possible and get some realistic um, and critical feedback if you have the budget to do so invest in a paid theme to set you apart from the traditional um, shopify store whatever you can do to set yourself apart from the competition and make your store look better than the next person's then it's only going to play to your advantages and increase your chances of success so take your time make sure everything looks really good invest in graphics in a designer buy the products yourself buy one of those cubes with a light in for 40 quid and take your own images whatever it is you have to do to make your site look really good make sure you take the time and invest in doing so and trust me it will pay dividends in the long run and with that being said then i'm going to wrap the video up there i'm not quite sure how long this video is i apologize if it's quite long um, hopefully there's some interesting points there that you've learned something you something to take away and consider actually implement into your business um, obviously any comments or questions on this or whatever it is just post them down below I read every single one so I will get back to you one final thought then before you go um, I did mention at the beginning of the video I do a callback service for the Ecom Academy which is a Shopify e-commerce training program that I run um, it has nine plus modules with 120 plus lessons it comes with my full support and guidance as a mastermind group um, lots of different things I'll put some information on screen now but if you want to jump on the phone with me talk one-to-one -one about what it involves and how it can help you then I'll be more than happy to do that and um, there'll be a link in the video description below thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one